welcome to The Feast Life, where we empower you, the modern homeschool mom, to create a life and homeschool you love. One founded on faith, family, freedom, and fun. I'm your host, Julie Ross, creator of the award-winning homeschool curriculum, A Gentle Feast, and a certified Christian life coach. For more information on today's episode and to access my free gift for you, check out thefeastlife.me. Charlotte Mason once said, life should be all living, not a mere tedious passing of time. So on this show, we seek to savor the feast of life. Girl, grab your favorite beverage and pull up a chair. You are welcome at this table. All right. Hey, everyone. Um, welcome. We wanted to give um, a chance for everyone to get an overview of a gentle feast and ask any specific questions um, that you may have once we go over th- everything. I know it can be a lot of information. So um, hopefully this will help give you all some clarity and some direction on what might be the best option for your family. Before we dive in, though, I just wanted to give you a little background on who I am and where Gentle Feast came from. I'm Julie Ross, if you didn't know that. (laughs) So I started homeschooling 20 years ago. Can you believe that? It's crazy, right? It makes me feel very old when I say that. And I was a former public school teacher and I also helped start two private schools in my area. And so when I started homeschooling, I started doing what I knew, which was basically school at home. I even had a little calendar. It would sit the pledge to the flag and had circle time and all this stuff. And within two years, I was completely miserable and burnt out and didn't want to homeschool anymore. And really when it came down to it was I didn't like how I felt. I felt like a dictator and I was constantly telling my kids what to do all the time. Did you do this assignment? Why haven't you done this? We got to move on to this just moving everybody throughout our day. I missed the interaction and relationship that I was hoping I could get from homeschooling my kids. I was also very burnout because I was constantly trying to reinvent the wheel, find the new best thing that would fix all my problems, going on Pinterest till midnight, trying to print out timeline figures or whatever I could find to try to incorporate as part of our day. And I I was very frustrated. And I had originally read Susan Schaefer Macaulay's book for the children's sake back when I was actually a public school teacher. And it was one of the reasons why I left teaching in that school was because I was so motivated by that book on what education could be like. Her children went to a Charlotte Mason school in England and she painted this beautiful picture of what I felt like education was supposed to be for. And I wanted that for my own children. So when I started homeschooling them, that was what I wanted was in that book. But I had no idea how to actually make what she was talking about a reality in our actual home. And back then there wasn't as many resources as, as there are now. And even in the past three years, there's been a huge growth in Charlotte Mason resources, which is amazing. So I decided I can either quit homeschooling or I could really dive in and find out what this lady says and what she's talking about and just try to do exactly what she said and see if that made any difference whatsoever. And so I dived into those pink volumes of all her educational philosophy and started changing a lot of things in her home. And slowly over time, our homeschool completely transformed. I went from being a dictator and anxious most of the time to being mostly, uh, you know, calm, relaxed. I enjoyed schooling. I enjoyed the things that we were learning about. And as I started to enjoy it, my kids started to enjoy it. And I got to see the beautiful fruit from this style of education. And so a gentle feast really grew out of what I was using in my own home with my own five children. And then, gosh, about 10 years ago, someone, one of my friends was like, you should really sell this. This is really good stuff. And I went, I don't think anybody would want to buy this. Like everybody can do all this stuff. And she's, yeah, she's like, maybe they can spend hours and hours of researching all this stuff that you've already put together, but not everybody wants to. And so the way you have it all laid out just makes so much sense. It's so easy. You should really sell it. And so I started put a gentle feast online and it just has grown from there. It's been an incredible journey and we've revamped it and tweaked it and made it better. And that's always my goal is to just keep improving it and making it better for everyone. 
So when I started a dental feast, I had a few goals in mind. One, I really wanted it to be family centered because that's how I was doing my homeschool. Not that we did everything together, but we were studying the same time period together. We did our morning time together. We did some read alouds together. And then the kids could separate for some of their individual studies. But I liked having that family atmosphere. I did not like what I did when I first started homeschooling where each grade level was doing different subjects and each child was doing multiple different subjects that didn't go together. At the time, I only had two kids that I was homeschooling and three kids under the age of three. <laughs> and the ones that I was homeschooling, they're all doing seven different subjects. That's 14 subjects and 14 different workbooks and 14 different textbooks. And that's a lot to keep track of. And so I really wanted to be able to integrate it as much as possible and have it be something that was family centered because I didn't have that when I first started. Like I said, I really wanted some of the subjects to be integrated as a whole. Because when I first started, we had a spelling workbook and a vocabulary workbook and a grammar workbook and a writing workbook. And the workbooks are this <laughs> stack of this things. And each lesson takes 30 to 45 minutes. And I wonder why we're all frustrated. And I feel like a dictator trying to get everybody through the lessons as fast as possible because they take forever. And so I'm like, this makes no sense. Like, why can't the language arts be integrated into the subjects that are learning. And so we're not having to have all these different workbooks and all these different things. They can work together. I also really wanted it to be something that someone could just open and use because I remember how frustrated I was as a new homeschooler having to spend hours online researching. And then you could just get lost in like these rabbit holes of research. Does that happen to anyone else? <laughs> or being on Pinterest and the new shiny thing that comes on your feed, you're like, oh, that looks like fun. Let me try that. <laughs> and before you know it, you've spent hours of your day on all of this. I just wanted it to be very simple that someone could just really embrace the philosophy, understand and open it and use it with their family. So I really thought through what would I have wanted back when I first started homeschooling. I needed someone to say, here is how Charlotte Mason taught geography. Here's how Charlotte Mason taught composition. Rather than me, like I said, trying to dive through all of those volumes and figure it out for myself. I really wanted someone to hold my hand. And so when I created a general piece, I didn't want it just to be like a curriculum that someone could just go to the store and buy and take home and never be able to figure out how to use it. I don't know if that ever happened to anybody else. You go to these like conventions to the exhibit hall and you buy something and you get home on Monday and you open it and you're like, I have no idea how to actually use this. <laughs> and who do I actually talk to get help to figure out how to use this? And giving a lot of Charlotte Mason support and a lot of Charlotte Mason help so that someone could have someone holding their hand through, which is what I wanted in a mentor as well. Another thing that was super important for me was to make something that was customizable because I would purchase things and I would get really frustrated because... <laughs> I don't really like to do what other people tell me to do. And I really want to do things my own way. And I really, I can't change that one book. And so since I can't change that one book, then I have to like throw the whole thing away because then that would just like mess it all up. If I like write on it and change that one thing, or I want to do this thing differently, or I don't want to do this week. You can't tell me what to do this week. And so for all the people that are literally like me, I wanted to make it where someone could go in, they could edit it. They could change things. They can move things around. They could use it as a tool rather than a dictator in a box that you have to fit in and you have to do all these things or you're not doing that correctly because I knew how frustrating that was for me. And I didn't want that for other people. I wanted them to feel like this is a tool that's gonna give me the freedom and confidence to educate in this style. And I didn't have that before. So that's the theory behind why I made a gentle feast set up the way it is. So briefly, I just wanted to share what I see it makes a gentle feast different than some other curriculums out there. So one thing is you get lifetime access to the cycles. You get all the grade level plans at one time. So grades one through 12, which is great because when you cycle back in four years, and I'll explain what the cycles are in a little minute, and you have older children, you're not having to rebuy a whole bunch of other stuff. And that's very different from what I've seen out there where some other curriculums, you get a membership for one year, or it's only good for one year, and then you can't go back and access it as your children grow. I wanted something that was affordable and that people could use long-term. And so when you purchase, if you purchase cycle one, four years from now, when your children's older, you'll go back to cycle one, they'll be in a different form. So we'll have different books and different assignments, but you're not having to buy a whole nother thing, which is an amazing deal. I also wanted it to be based around American history. 
So as I was digging through Charlotte Mason's writings, she was very vehement that they had to start with the history of their own country. And I saw that with my own children, just how valuable it was to start with what they knew and could experience. And they didn't understand things that were happening thousands of years ago in a foreign land. And there's a lot to Charlotte Mason's approach to history. And I can link to an article if you want to read more about how she approaches history in the different forms, because it can be a little complicated. But when I started doing it according to how she had it structured, I saw the value of why she did it that way and how beautiful and simple it really is. So I wanted to be based around American history at first in the younger years. And then I really wanted to combine modern books and older books, because a lot of the Charlotte Mason resources that were available when I first started were very much using only older books. And as a former teacher, I knew there were so many great books out there that have been published in the last 30 years, especially picture books. And I really wanted to bring those books in as well and combine them. So I really did look at what Charlotte Mason included in her programs, what books she used, but then is there something that's more modern that kind of fits the style of what she was trying to incorporate? So before we go any further and I show you some of the actual components of a gentle feast, Shay, I'm gonna let you take the floor for a little bit. Is there anything that you wanna share as the background and basis before we get dive in? I guess maybe I can tell how I ended up with you quickly. If that's yeah, I'd love to hear. Yeah, you're back. Yeah, yeah, this is my 20th year homeschooling as well. I've been homeschooling for 20 years. Oh, it's amazing because we both only look 30. I know. I know. It's uh, weird. <laughs> nobody would ever guess. But so I have five children like Julie. I've graduated three. I have two at the time we're recording this, still at home. And I followed Charlotte Mason for years and years, but I was really doing my own thing, trying to figure out how to do a lot of the things that she mentioned. And one night I was, I put six years ago, gosh, maybe seven now, I think. But anyway, I thought surely somebody has already done this who has incorporated these cycles and that I want and put this stuff together. So I found the gentle feast online and put on Facebook, does anybody ever use this? And a friend of mine said, gosh, you guys have mutual friends. And so we lived near each other at the time. So I totally fangirled on Julie and hi, can I take you to dinner? You want to meet? <laughs> and picked her brain and just found out what a wonderful person that she is personally too, as well as really good at what she does. And so I started working for Julie part-time three years ago and have added on little by little as the years have gone. And so my heart and my passion is really to help people to feel confident in their homeschools. I do all the consultations for Gentle Feast and most of the customer care. And I love my job because I feel like we really are helping people at their dining room table Monday through Friday doing school. That's what matters to me that when they open up their books, they feel like, okay, I know what to do. So yeah, that's how I got here. And I'm in cycle three this year for the second time. After next year, I will have been through all the cycles twice. Wow. So prize, <laughs> do I win a prize? I don't know what it is, but and, uh, I get to use it. But yeah, so I think this is really important. We have a lot of questions that are like generalized questions. I know Julie and I've talked about, so to have a place where you can go and play this video and get those things answered that are generalized questions are, I think will be super helpful. Can you share a little bit, I don't, you don't need to name anything, but what you were, what the style was of what you were using before and how things have changed using a dental feast in your family? Sure. So I was using a, C, a Charlotte Mason inspired curriculum that also had a four-year history cycle. And the main reason I was using that was because I did want to combine, just like you said, I wanted my kids to be together and as much, I wanted to feel like I had my hands on what they were learning. I started out with the free curriculum and it was just overwhelming for me. I couldn't figure out how to keep it going. Everybody was on a separate year. So I started out with this four-year cycle curriculum and it's Charlotte Mason inspired. And what I found out was there was very little actual Charlotte Mason in the curriculum. And so I was substituting many books. I was spending hours going through other book lists to try to figure out, okay, this is not a living book. How can I substitute that living book for this one? Because my their narrations were just terrible for those books that were not living books. And I was frustrated trying to carry out the philosophy and the method. So after I, and actually we had a great flow to our days because we were following Charlotte Mason. Mm -hmm. So our days were good, but the background work that I was doing was, especially in the summers, was just, 
tremendous. It was a lot of work every year. So now I spend about 20 minutes on Sunday nights and I open my manual. I like to have something printed. I check and see where everybody's going to be, put that in their planner because my children are older. I don't have any form one this year. I have an older form two and a form four and I make sure that they have what they need for the week. And that really is the extent. Every once in a while, we sub out a book because we've read it or I'm a total book nerd. So I just won't have one that I just want to stick in there. But I never feel like it's dictating what I have to do. There's just, a, it's been a great tool for us. Yeah, yeah, great. Let me show some of the, pro, like how it's set up here for folks. The main curriculum that you purchase is online. So you get access to whatever cycle you buy, you get access to this page. And like I said, it's for life, which is, or as, as long as the general feast exists or the internet, <laughs> but, and that's very different from other ones where some of them need to buy like a membership and it's only good for that year. As part of that, you get these lesson plans. So like I said, it was very important for me that people could customize this and make it their own. And that's what Shay was saying about when I had all five kids at home, I would spend 30 minutes on a Sunday and I could bam, bam, make their little plans for the week, print out the ones for my older ones, write out the ones in a little notebook for my younger ones. And we were ready to go. I wasn't constantly feeling like I have to figure this all out and I have to research this and I have to change this. It was just so easy to have something that we could follow. So in that you get uh, Google spreadsheet. So these are, oh, I'm in the behind the scenes page. I don't want to be on the beside the scenes, <laughs> the behind the scenes page. Oh dear. So now I can't hold on. Hold on. Sorry. So sorry. Let me, cause if I'm in the behind the scenes and you, you're, I can't click on things. There we go. All right. So these are ed- edible. You can make a copy of them and then you can change them. Like, oh, I want to substitute out this book or I want to combine these kids. I even show in the video how I cut and paste the different cells for my older kids. And I would print out a Google sheet for them every week, which just makes it super, super simple. So you get these editable lesson plans here and a general feast is based on forms, not grades. So that's something slightly different um, than what you might be used to. If you're not familiar with Charlotte Mason, that's how she structured her um schools. So form one is grades one through three. Form two is grades, my brain just went four through six. Form three is seventh through ninth. And form four is 10 through 12. So if you have uh, multiple age kids, right away, some of them are going to be in the same form. Then if you have, and then there's other ways that you can combine as well. And we'll go over that in a little bit. So I just wanted to show you the membership page. You could see all the stuff that comes with it. So we have separate high school plans because science plans, because those are pretty in depth. A parent packet, like I said, that explains, this is how Charlotte Mason taught geography. This is how she did this. Give you some of that background information. You get um, an introduction course, which is over six hours long of me explaining a gentle feast, how to set up your supplies, more of the philosophy and the thinking behind it so that you're equipped with everything that you need to start rather than trying to go through and find all these different resources. You have sample schedules. So these are based on Charlotte Mason's timetables of short lessons. These are editable. So you can come up with a custom schedule for your family. This is a video I was talking about where I explain how I can plan everything in 30 minutes for all five kids. There's foreign language plans for the younger kids, handicrafts, Things that are specific to Charlotte Mason, the handicrafts and the sofa and things like that. I won't go in Swedish draw, I won't go into all of that. Again, these are tools. You don't have to use them, right? These were things that Charlotte Mason included in her programs. And I want to give tools for people that want to also do that in their home. That doesn't mean you have to. You can pick and choose. And that's what this is for. Map drills for the different geography lessons, books read aloud. If there's a YouTube video of a book, and that's one of the questions we get asked all the time, like, how much are all these books going to cost? I really was cautious with that. So you could buy like a box curriculum from some of the curricula that you could purchase it. And at your door will arrive a big box with the books in it. And they're all brand new. And that's going to cost between 500 and $800 for one year for one kid, which is mind boggling to me. (laughs) And so on the book list that you get for a gentle feast, I link, if there's a free version of the book on the internet, like I give that to you. If there's an audio version, I link to that as well. A lot of the younger books, the picture books are read a lot on YouTube, but I know not everyone likes screens, but if you're trying to save money, it's a great way to do it as well. And yeah, so there's just a ton of resources and helps in here because again, I really wanted to give everyone the tools that they needed here. Like I said, you have 
lifetime access, you can go back and access this page in four years. Like Shay's been through these things twice and her one child's going to graduate having gone through all these. So you can use these uh, for multiple years for multiple kids. In addition to having this online curriculum, so that's what you purchase. You get access to everything you need. There's hyperlinks on the lesson plans to different resources. Shay was saying a lot of people like to have everything a little bit more hands-on even than this. And so there's the main component for that is the teacher's manual. So basically what that is a printed book that helps guide you through the curriculum. You don't have to have it. A lot of people just use this spreadsheet. But if you're new and you're starting out, I really highly encourage having the printed one or if you have a large family, and I'll explain why in a second here. So again, the printed book, it explains everything. It has a lot of background information. It has planning sheets in it. I have mine if you want me to show it. I'm going to pull it up here. Oh, <laughs> oh, I just realized I'm not sharing the whole screen. Thank you, Shay. Okay. Let me, let me share this screen. Okay, there we go. Oh, yes, there you go. Okay, let me go back and show you all the things I was talking about that you couldn't actually see. Yeah, so it has all the background information, like I was saying, um, about the different parts of um, how to schedule, what's included, that kind of thing. It has these planning sheets, and, and then it also has books. Okay, so here's what a week looks like. And this is in, if you get the printed one, you can have this. So the morning time is how we start our day. These are what I call the beauty subjects. These are what Charlotte Mason incorporated she didn't put them all into morning time that was not her thing that came afterward but for me it was just easier to put all of these in morning time when I knew we were actually going to do it and it made us start our day in a really beautiful way so I loved learning about poetry listening to classical music having an art study and I'll go into morning time in a second because there's another resource that goes with it there is a language arts component to a gentle feast some people substitute this out with something else that they use, but it's so simple to include the one that's already integrated. Like I said, with the copy work and the grammar and everything that goes along with what you're studying in history, it just makes it so much simpler than having a bunch of different books everywhere. The reason I said this is the printed version is very valuable for people with a large family is you can see all the forms on one page here. So if you have Shay, a form two and a form four, you can see their plans for the week all on one page Whereas if you're on the online spreadsheets, each spreadsheet is only one form. So a lot of people with big families like seeing the printed version. And then you'll see here like days one and two, you're reading from this book. I don't tell you what day of the week to do history. There are sample schedules in here where I show you how all the components can fit into your week, but that's up to you. One, I did it that way because I don't like people telling me what to do. And then B, if come Monday, everybody's throwing up and you're not able to teach history, you already feel like you're behind for the week. So this way you can decide what two days you wanna do it. Some days you might have to double up if that's what's happening in your life, but you have that flexibility to make your schedule as you go through there. Let me see, I see people, questions here. Uh, we're gonna do Q and A at the end. So if you have a question, you might wanna hold off to the very end, we do Q and A and then I can see the questions because sometimes we'll get lost in the chat if you ask that. So when you per okay, so someone asked that I will answer this one. So when you when you purchase this print, this printed manual is an add-on. So the what you're purchasing is the online based curriculum for each cycle. If you want to add on the printed book, you can. But if you just you can't just purchase the printed book, you have to have um, this online plans. Because like I said, a lot of things are hyperlinked, the wee videos, music for the composer studies and things, and you wouldn't have that. If you don't have this, you can't just buy the printed book separately. And some people buy those used and then they get frustrated because they don't have this online membership. So that's what it was created for was this main base curriculum is this online membership page here. And then some people want to add on uh, the printed book. Another thing that people like to add on, again, this is optional. In this online membership, you do get a spreadsheet with the morning time plans and it has hyperlinks to the art, to the poems, to the songs and those kind of things. But I like just having everything printed out for me, especially with the cost of color printing these days. So a lot of people like the printed morning time book as well. In this book, again, everything's laid out for you. So it makes it super simple. Um, so you have your hymn study in here and it gives you background information. You have your folk songs in here. You have your recitation pieces in here. For composer study, I, I love this. You know, you have listening guide. So for each selection, 
and I'm not a music person. So we first started composer study was listening to the classical music piece, which is fantastic, right? It's more exposure than they would get otherwise. But I love that Rayanna Goss, who uh, rewrote some of these composer studies, she gives lessons on, okay, here's the instrument that's being used in this, or this is this style of music. Because again, I don't know anything about it. So it's been really cool to study the pieces with what is in here in this printed morning time. And this only comes in the morning time actual manual. This is just a spreadsheet of the plan. So if you want these kind of more in-depth resources, you definitely want to look at getting the, the morning time manual here. And then the same thing for the art. So the artwork is printed, it's included in here, which is so nice to have the colored copies to show everyone. If I'm printing them from my computer, again, that can use a lot of ink. <laughs> and then there's resources for each term. There's a poet that you learn about as well. So these morning time manuals are very thorough and they make it a lot more in depth than what you can get here and does have everything laid out for you. So a lot of people really like having that printed out for them as well. And like I said, there's also the language arts component. So that would be, oh, I didn't pull that up, did I? <laughs> Shay, why don't you talk for a second and I'll find it on my computer. Yeah, so I do want to address a couple of questions. because yeah. Okay, you, great. Yeah, they're they going too fast, I can't see them. Yeah, I had written a few down and maybe I missed okay. them, but so if you purchase a base curriculum, then that what you see there that says the 2023 links, that's only links. If you purchase a printed manual, then you're obviously, you're not going to get that updated. If you purchase, if you purchase the base curriculum, then the link and the links need to be updated or changed. We, we will, of course, do that. But I do want to say about the morning time. I think that's one of the things, the beauty loop is something everybody, you know, has great intentions of including in their homeschool. And mm -hmm. one of the questions was, did your children actually enjoy morning time? It, oh. If you don't have something in front of you ready to go, it can be really difficult to do. But I think since we've had the morning time plans and the morning time manual, printing manual especially, it means we actually do the beauty loop subjects. They don't get pushed to the end. We actually start our day with those. And right. it's so simple. And our kids, no high schooler normally is going to say, oh, I can hardly wait to listen to our composer today. But what <laughs> happens is when you incorporate it as a part of your routine and it's just something that you do and you're going to do it, they learn to appreciate it and they learn to expect it. And it really does become a beautiful part of the day. I play that same music, whatever composer we're studying, I'll just tell the Google is what we got. I'll tell the Google, hey, play that particular Brahms or whatever, uh, whoever we're studying. And so it, it ends up being a, a really great opportunity to actually do the things that it's not those things like, okay, we think we just got to do math. We just got to do language arts. We have to do, but this beauty stuff is really worth taking the time to incorporate in your day. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So I don't know. Can you see this now, Shay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. So this is the language art packet. This is for form, what form is this? <laughs> okay, yeah, form one. So this will be for grades one through three. So mm -hmm. first language art, Charlotte Mason used copy work. Or I was like looking for passages on the internet and printing them off or looking for passages in my kid's book to try to find something that they would agree to that they wanted to copy. Now I don't have to think about it, right? It's just, here's the copy work passage. And these come from some of the stories that they're reading. It also comes from the time period of history that they're learning about or other great pieces of literature. So they're always great quality. Then in form, and there's one other thing. So every day they're doing a little bit of copy work for the week. So this will be the whole passage for the entire week. So they do a little bit each day. And then in form one, the spelling words come from this passage. So they're going to practice those each day. And these are basic sight words or words that are fun, like princess. <laughs> Then there's a writing assignment where they are orally composing to you when you write down at that age what they're doing. There's a drawing. There's very basic grammar in form one. Most of, there's also like phonics reviews. And then the last day is dictation, but it's different than what she included for the older kids because they're only doing the spelling words that they practice. In form two, the copywork passage is longer. They choose the spelling words based on words they don't know from that passage, or you can help them choose those words. They practice those words all week. There's grammar included in the form two packets. Again, that ties in with the copywork passage that ties in with the history. So it's not this arbitrary, go get XYZ book and come do it. And then at that age in form two, so that's grades four through six. And again, it's a process. So you're working them up as they go through forms. So a fourth grader might not do the whole copywork passage for dictation. Dictation is when you say the passage to the child and they write it from memory. So they're learning, they're spelling, their grammar, their punctuation 
in context. So there's a whole bunch with Charlotte Mason language arts if you aren't familiar with it, but if you are familiar with, this makes it very simple to do. The um, form three junior high packet, you're using a supplemental grammar book and the passages aren't written out like in handwriting. They're typed out and they're copying those into a, a notebook, same thing for high school. Um, and then some different composition assignments based on the things that they're reading and doing for those different grade levels. So again, the base curriculum, you're getting so much, but I wanted to create tools for people that were really like, I just want it in my hands. I just want to open. I just want to go. I want to ev everything integrated. So it all flows together very smoothly. We also have a reading curriculum and a handwriting book. So if your children are younger and they're not reading yet, um, instead of doing the language arts packet, you would do a phonics curriculum. And we have one of those if you want one, but there's lots of other great ones out there. And then you would do a handwriting with them instead of doing that copy work that's in the language arts packet until they're ready. The nice thing about this, like I said, is you really can combine different ages. And that's a question we get all the time. So Shay, do you want to talk about how you can combine different ages? Sure. So if you have children in the same form, then they're already basically combined. So if you have a first grader and a third grader or a fourth grader and a fifth grader or whatever, if they're in the same form, then that's done for you. But no matter what forms you have, they're all going to be studying the same time period. So that's really helpful. It, it is a combination, even though their lessons are going to be different. Just the fact that if you're a child, like we're in cycle three. So when Mary, when my Lydia is talking about Harriet Tubman, I know I'm like, like, wait a minute, you're studying her. I know she is because also my form two is studying her as well. She's reading the book too. So that's one way. Another way is morning time. The fact that we all start out our day sitting at the table together with our scripture and our memory verse, our recitations, our um, hymn study and all. That's one way. But another way is really is extremely personal because it depends on the children that you have. Right. So <laughs> that's why this is, a, we get a lot of this question and it's really difficult to answer unless, because only you know that. I have, okay, a sixth grader that can do some form three work, but some of my other children, when they were in the sixth grade, they could not have done that. Yeah. So a lot of it is looking at the books that you have. This is normally the advice that I give. Look at the book list, pull some up, see where they are and think, okay, this child definitely could read that. Another thing that I have that I suggest is that you can have your older children read some of the books to some of the younger kids. Mm -hmm. The lessons are long, so that's another way to combine. Tea time is a way that you're combined. So you're doing your read aloud during tea time. We combine your nature study. Mm -hmm. Exploring nature with children, is, I think, is scheduled in two cycles. And there's so much in there that you could easily do that. I put my form four when we're doing that. I include them in some of that. There's a lot of different ways to get those subjects knocked out during the day without running from kid to kid to try to make sure that everybody's getting their assignments completed. But it is very personal to your family. Yeah, and I think that's part of the reason why it is often hard for us to answer that question is because I have, from what I've seen in my goals in creating, this is one of the most user-friendly for combining children there possibly is, but we can't go, oh, you have a grade this and this, so we're, you rewrite this and you do these plans instead. But we can give you the tools and the thinking to go, oh, geography might go really well if you have a third grader and a fourth grader. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter that one's form one and one's form two, you really can combine for geography. Here's a way to do that and make it more a lot more practical. But it really depends, like you're saying, on your kids. Because I've had kids too that weren't ready to go up a form. Some of my neurodivergent kids, they stayed in form one an extra year, or they stayed in form two for an extra two years because these books are so rich in the way that you're doing things can so easily be adapted for children that kind of might need some extra assistance or might need some extra adaptations that you're not having to revamp everything every time a kid might go up in form. And so I was able to combine differently depending on which like you're saying which child was it <laughs> that needed to be combined but what I call them the feast subjects and those are more of the independent studies those are the subjects that they're going to do on their own if possible but if you want to combine some of them you certainly can and looking at your kids and their ages and their abilities and it, it will require some more practical help perhaps a consultation or in the Facebook group to answer that but I really feel like that's was the heart behind a dental feast was to be able to combine as much as possible while still giving your kids the riches of the forms and the books and the ages that they're at. Another question we get a lot is about scheduling. So what does a typical day look like? And I want to be like, have you ever had a typical day, Shay? Because I haven't. 
Not yet. Not in 20 years yet. Yeah, I keep, still waiting. We're going to like maybe every once in a while we have a day that goes, wow, that was exactly like I expected, but it's rare. Yes. So what would you say about how your day flows? I think the rhythm is so much more important than the yeah. schedule. So yeah. our rhythm never changes. We start our day always with morning time, always with scripture, always with the beauty loop. Then we always flow to the next feast subjects. And then we have our lunch and then we always flow to the afternoon subjects. That is extremely powerful because it's extremely adaptable. Right. So you never know when a kid's going to throw up or you have a dentist appointment. So if you know what the rhythm is and you're not so stuck on the particular schedule, then it's okay because we can bump that reading. Maybe we bump it to Friday. We're not, we don't just have to completely say, okay, this day is done. Another thing is that these books are, they're so beautiful and rich that a lot of times we, they, the kids, they want to hear from this book. Okay. We missed our, our history book. We can read it in the evening. Yeah. It's not like we're opening a workbook, like it's homework. Mm -hmm. I would say as far as schedule, the schedules, particularly the sample schedules in the back of the manual or that are editable in the parent packet are, are wonderful. That's what I use for, to give my children copy paste and write in what we're doing for that week. And that really, it keeps me from having to reinvent the wheel as far as scheduling goes. Yeah. And another key component is Charlotte Mason's concept of short lessons. Like I said, like at first my kids had a vocabulary workbook and a spelling workbook and a grammar workbook. And so language arts took two hours <laughs> and we all wanted to poke our eyes out. Right. And if you have these short lessons and they're learning these things in an integrated way, like through copy work, language arts takes 15 minutes. It's a huge difference from what I was doing before. Right. And, and then if they're reading a book and then they're narrating it to you, or if they're older and they're writing out a narration, maybe 20 to 30 minutes, right? It's not read this passage, then fill in this timeline, then answer these questions, then build this Salto map and history's taken an hour and a half, right? And I think that is the key difference is with scheduling is we're done by 1.30 every day. And my kids are teenagers. Now we start school at 8.30, so we don't start that early. <laughs> because you're able to get through so much more when you're not doing all this busy work. Mm -hmm. And then that leaves your afternoon for some of these afternoon occupations and things. So people are like, my kids are super hands-on. Like they like doing those kind of building things. And I'm like, that's great. That's what my kids do all afternoon, but it's not me dictating it. It's not taking the middle of our actual feast learning time away. What are some other questions you get often today? We get a lot of questions about the history stream, about why is there for the upper forms, okay. because as you move up in forms, so that might be something that you want to address. Like, why do you have more than one history stream for the upper forms? Yes. So the way, and I feel like I had a chart somewhere, but I don't remember where that went. Let me go back to the main like shopping page to show the different cycles. But the way that she had it done in her programs was they were learning British history from the beginning till they graduated. Hey everyone, Julie Ross here. I just wanted to pop in and let you know about something special that I am doing. Um, starting May 7th, I will be doing a free three-day workshop called The Gentle Art of Homeschooling. So you may have chosen to homeschool because you want to give your children the gift of an education that looks vastly different from our modern education system. You know, the one of checking off all the boxes, cramming in all the facts, and the one-size-fits-all mentality. You long for connections, deep discussions, and a slower pace of life. You want your children to develop good character, critical thinking, and a love for learning. But all the different curriculum options and educational philosophies and all those voices are making your head spin. And you wish you could just have someone take your hand and guide you through it all. Well, now you can. Join me um, for three days for this free workshop I have helped thousands of families walk through the gentle art of homeschooling, and I would love to share what I have learned with you as well. So to sign up, go to thefeastlife.me forward slash gentle to save your seat and join me for three days where I will show you how to fill your homeschool with creativity, curiosity, and connection. Again, that's thefeastlife.me forward slash gentle. So there's several different days of history. And where's the uh, okay? There's several different days of history, 
And the, in the older grades, they have two days of history of their own country. Then they'd have another day when they're learning about history that was happening in the rest of the world at that same time period. And then they would have a day or two of ancient history. The reason she didn't start ancient history till around age 10 or fifth grade equivalent today is because that's when their abstract reasoning develops and they're able to understand something that happened super long ago. You ask like a six-year-old, how was grandma's house? And they're like, yeah, so yes, tomorrow when I went to grandma's house last year, but it was really like last week, like they don't have a concept of time. <laughs> and so the older kids are able to understand things that happened a lot more time ago, uh, happened a longer time ago. Also, she was concerned about introducing them to the violence of these ancient time periods and some of the pagan beliefs of Rome and Greece until they were older and had a stronger biblical foundation. So I really resonated with that and appreciated that. But they're always learning about the history of their own country, which is super cool because they're building on this foundation. So when they're in Form 1 and they're reading a picture book about George Washington and the Battle of Trenton, and then they're in 11th grade and they're reading a very thick history book and it's describing George Washington and the Battle of Trenton, they've had this foundation that keeps getting built and they're able to expand their knowledge and really understand things in a very beautiful way. Did you have anything you wanted to share about that, Shay, with your own kids? Um, only that I really have seen the fruit of how that works. It really does work. It I, is complicated, was, but yeah. <laughs> when I first started with the multiple history streams, before, which was before General Feast, actually, when I was years ago, when I started Charlotte Mason, I thought this is just never going to work. But the, the connections, which Charlotte Mason talks about that consistently about the connections and education is the science of relations. You have the opportunity to relate to what the Romans are doing with what's going on in the cycle. You're not just hitting ancient history, for instance, all in one entire year. So it really does make a difference. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I just linked to that, Shay. So if you want to wrap yeah. your brain around it a little bit more, I don't want to spend too much yeah. time on that. Ashley asked a great question about what's the difference between a cycle and a form. So a cycle is a historical time period. So there's four cycles in a gentle feast. Um, I've titled them based on what was happening in American history at the time. But like I said, in the older grades, they do have, oh, I'm not sharing my screen again. Hold on. You're not seeing what I'm showing you. Okay. All right, here we go. So there's four different cycles here and you can see the different covers are based on different time periods. The names of the cycles go with what they're doing in American. But like I said, starting in fifth grade, they will add on a day of what's happening in the rest of the world during that time period, which has been fast, was fascinating for me because I never learned history that way. So it was like Mozart lived at the same time as George Washington. Like what? I had no idea. He, he just seemed so far away and different. And then the ancient history goes like this. So once they're older in, in fifth grade, cycle one is ancient Egypt Bible times. Cycle two is Greeks, cycle three is Romans, and cycle four is medieval times. So they're getting all of history. It's not like there's just a big gap, but it's just coming in different stages. So those are the cycles. And like I said, when you get to modern times, you go back to cycle one, but your kids are in older form, older grade, and they will have different books. When Charlotte Mason, in Charlotte Mason schools, whenever a student would come into the school, they would join in with whatever the school was learning. So the whole school was doing the same time period. It wasn't like this grade level is doing this and this grade level is doing that. So no matter what kids you add in the mix, and we get this question a lot, right, Shay? Oh, yes. two years from now, I'm going to have a third grader. Do I go back to cycle one for that? that I'm going to have a first grader and a third grader. Do I go back to cycle one for the first grader? No, no. The first grader joins in cycle three. They'll get the other information when they go back through around. So a form is a grade level. A form is a combination of three different grades. So like I said, form one is grades one through three. Form two is four through six, three is seven through ninth, and form four is 10 through 12. The cycles give you lesson plans for all the forms. And like I said, it's something that you can go back and access again and use later on. So this kind of chart shows you that. You can get some more information on the website about what's specifically included in each cycle, like for morning time, what artists and composers are included. Science is also based around the historical time periods. Shay, you're doing cycle three, so that's Edison and electricity, right? We're yeah. doing Edison right now. And it's some yeah. of my favorite science that we have done. The, it's been amazing. So interesting. Yeah. And what was before Edison? If I have my to look at it. Working. But it's each cycle, not... it's whatever scientists lived in that time period. So like cycle one, yeah. I think that one is Da Vinci in physics. Cycle four is Marie Curie in chemistry. So they're getting the different branches of science 
but they're also reading a living biography of a oh, scientist who studied that. Medicine in the gateway to medicine is was the okay. line. Okay. So medicine, the human body. Yeah. The human body. Yes. Okay. So in terms of, is a general feast right for everybody? No, it is not. <laughs> if you um, really want scripted lessons, like on Monday for geography, you say X, Y, Z, and then you move on to this subject and you say X, Y, Z. That is not a general feast. Like I said, I really wanted this to be tools that you could use and tweak and make for yourself. And I wanted to give you the information I wanted to give you the philosophy so that you felt confident enough that on Monday, you can decide what subjects are going to be included on Monday. And you knew you're not really doing a lot of saying things because it's really coming from the living books, right? And the kids are saying a lot. If you want a lot of worksheets and quizzes, that is not included, okay? So Charlotte Mason had a very different approach to exams. I explain all that in here, but I really want to empower you to have that. If you're looking for, like I said, a lot of fill in the blank kind of extra things, that's not what this is about. And if you're like, I don't really agree with Charlotte Mason's philosophy, not that you have to agree on everything because there's certain things I don't agree on, but I really encourage parents to study the why behind the what. So a general feast provides the what, it provides the tools, but you have to have the background of the philosophy and why am I teaching it this way? Why are we waiting till fifth grade to bring in ancient history? Why are we doing narration instead of a bunch of comprehension questions? Like you have to understand some of that um, philosophy, but I do give you the tools to have an understanding of that. I really do feel like a general feast is for those who really are burnt out, perhaps if you've been homeschooling for a while, trying to put it all together yourself and finding all the resources like I was. For those who really don't have the time to spend hours researching and planning it all together. For those who really want to create that beauty in your home and that focus on critical thinking and having those wonderful discussions. That has been the biggest blessing of using the Charlotte Mason philosophy and what we've been doing in our home is just seeing how her approach has not only changed my children, but it's also changed me as a home educator. I just absolutely love everything that we do. Does it mean every day is rainbows and fluffy unicorns? No. <laughs> so that's not what I'm saying, but it, I'm a lot less stressed because I have a lot of things you know, there it's planned out for me. I have things at my fingertips and, and that affects the atmosphere of our home. And we're learning beautiful, wonderful things together, which is super fun as well. So to close it, before we open up for questions, Shay, was there anything else you wanted to add? The only other question we get a lot of, we get a lot of different questions, but we also get asked, how is the long is this going to take? And so with the sample schedules, you do give like a, if, if you do every single thing, you do the guess of like how long it may take you, what forms you have and what children you have. And I would say, for instance, four and four, you're talking like what, four hours in their day for if they do everything for four hours and mm -hmm. that's every single subject. So it's not like a typical school day where you're going to start at eight o'clock and be done at three. <laughs> and these are short lessons and it doesn't have to take you all day long to get them done. Yeah. Another question I just thought we get asked a lot too is about the books and the cost <laughs> and yes. finding the books. And so I really tried hard to only include books that you can actually find. Okay. If there's a book that is out of print that I absolutely love, and there's one in cycle one and form one, America begins that I just love and I haven't been able to find anything as good. I do give an alternative, but I also recorded myself reading the book on YouTube because it's just my absolute favorite book for starting to teach history to little kids. But most of the books are ones you can get from the library. You can get them in the public domain on archive.org. There's lots of free books. That's one of the things I, feedback I get all the time is people are so grateful for how easy the books are to find and how affordable they are. Yeah, we get that a lot. And I, I really, I think people get nervous when they look at the book list and there's a whole lot of books. So you see thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, but I have never spent thousands of dollars. And this is, and the other thing is once you purchase a book, if you decide to purchase it, which I mean, I love to buy books. So I do have a lot, but you're going to have that if you have multiple children. So my form two is using some books that another child that I have was informed to use. So I didn't have to purchase those again for cycle three. I already had them. And you have a really great friend that loans you books sometimes too. <laughs> She's amazing. She's my <laughs> library. <laughs> <laughs> well, having friends that use it too really helps yeah. as well okay lisa asked a question great question lisa shay do you want to address up if i can get back to the chat because oh, i'll tell you she asked about um, high school credits 
Oh, okay. Yes. It, it is in the parent book on how to do it as well. Yes. It's in the parent book, how to assign credits. Um, a lot of this, I will say, depends on the state you live in. Um, each state is totally different. I do consultations from people all over the country and every single state is different. So we can't give you like an overarching, this is exactly how you do it. However, if you do have an older child, there's several ways to assign credits. And uh, what I do is I assign credits based on the partial, what, what they did partially do through the year. In other words, because it takes four years of high school to go through the four years, it will take them, a, they'll get a world history credit, they'll get a U.S. history credit, they'll get a U.S. Ge a geography, world geography credit, excuse me, and so you can add up the classes that they do to give you credit, and I will tell you, when I sat down in South Carolina, we have to have um, an association that we go through. And so when I first started a general feast and really years ago, I started Charlotte Mason, but I went back, I did a curriculum consultation with her and I showed her the book list and I said, can you help me? Because I had a ninth grader. And she said, easily, if your student reads all these books and does these assignments, I brought all my stuff in, this is honors credit. And you're yeah. talking about their writing narrations on these in high school. And you mean to tell me they're going to read this whole list? Yes. And they're like, absolutely. Keep, you know, keep your records, track your records but that's credit. Another thing that really helps you with high schoolers in this is the fact that you're going to have a schedule every single week of exactly what they did. And there's lots of ways to do that. You can print out their spreadsheet for them, or you can use the editable ones. But if anybody wonders, hey, what did you do for geography? This is what, here's the word that you did. Plus you have all those narrations that they did for high school. It's a little yeah. different because there's a lot of oral, but it can yeah, but be even different. my kids that are in college, Shay, and I think you've said something similar with yours, or like some of the stuff you had us do in high school way harder than anything we've done so far. And my daughter's about to graduate from college. So just in terms of the level of the difficulty of some of the reading, the ability to take in complex information and put it into narration is a huge cognitive skill. And some of the easy recall stuff in college, they're just like, this is so simple. <laughs> and I will say also, because my the first student I had that went through AGF, he went through the, the cycles, he really struggled in some things. And so the beauty of it was I could drop down and give him some form three things without mm -hmm. having to reinvent the wheel right. and then just add in some of the form four things to that. So he could still get a high school credit because the material is still rich and he's still doing mm -hmm. You know, amount of work, but I'm not having to push him. And a lot of times, if you just buy, okay, high school world history, you buy a pack. If your kid doesn't get it, your kid doesn't get it. There's no options for manipulating it to help your child to fit mm -hmm. them. So you do have that option for high school um, because you have all the plans right there. Yeah. So yeah, there's not a kind of right answer, but it's very doable, Lisa. If you have other questions, please put them in the chat and we'll try to get as many as we can in the next few uh -huh. minutes. I came off mute to ask this one. So if you have a neurodivergent child or perfectionism and all of that, 20 minutes to write a pi symbol and all that, the handwriting is torture. So my question is, if we are working on that handwriting during the week and the we're moving along with other things, mm -hmm. when we get to Friday, if we haven't quite finished his copy work, do you go ahead and do the dictation or whatever? I think that's the last day. I'm not sure what day, but would you go ahead? Because he essentially practiced his handwriting. He what do you recommend for those and, situations? So do ahead, do copy work and dictation. Copy work is the mechanics of the handwriting and dictation is the, the spelling and the grammar and the punctuation. With my child who's dyslexic and has some other things for copy work, it might be by the end of the week, we have one sentence but it's going to look absolutely fantastic. And for him, that's great. Okay. And then I will give him dictation on that one sentence. That's it. The sentence that he actually practiced. So it's not, he's having to copy a bunch of stuff for his written narrations. He does talk to text on them or he, he's now type. he's in sixth grade now and he's typing them himself. And just this week, he added capital letters and periods because it used to just be all one big paragraph and I'm like I can't understand it I can't read it <laughs> and I was like bud you gotta help me out here I need some I need to know when to stop because I know but I just, 
they really struggle with like where I'm supposed to add the period. And I said, okay, when you're reading it back to yourself, every time you want to take a breath because you're tired of reading, it needs a period in a capital letter. That's how I know the sentence is going to stop. And he did it. He added them all in the right places and perfect. But again, it's this process. And that's why I love Charlotte Mason's philosophy is because it is so adaptable. And it's focusing on how can you focus? How can you do great quality work? It's not, did we check all the boxes? Did we finish all these things? It's giving them success on what they're actually capable of doing. And that builds their confidence to want to try more. So Ashley had a question. I'm looking at the AGF website. I see this like one-based curriculum. Teacher planner morning time bundle science at level one. I can use that all again when I go back through all the cycles. So I only need to buy it once. So the base curriculum, that online based curriculum is what you get the lifetime access to that membership page. Um, your teacher planner, you can use that again. Some people like to buy another one because they wrote in the first one. <laughs> the morning time bundle, there is an actual, an option too. It's not available printed right now, but it's available online. If you want different artists and different composers the next time you go through, or you could use that one again. Sight and Sound Level 1, again, there's going to be pages in that that the kids are going to use, and they're going to use their language arts book and write in it. So you would have to buy, those are consumables. So like I, I see the online based curriculum as being like this membership page, and then the other things are consumable. The teacher workbook, not so much. A lot of people do reuse that. In the morning time, they do reuse that. But like some of the, the ones the students are actually using are consumable. Does that help? And then another Ashley, it's Ashley Party. How do the history cycles appear to lower elementary form one? They really hold the kids' attention, just being real. History can be boring. And I hear that science is incorporated. Shay, what do you want to say about that? I want to say that I absolutely love form one history. And Me I too. Know, I'm like, it's so much I fun. I love it so much. Um, I never, I hated history until I started following Sarah Mason. I'm like, why did nobody teach me this? And to specifically answer your question, Form 1 History is amazing. I use Form 1 History books and I don't even have a Form 1 student. So I use those books. I check them out from the library. I put them in a book basket and my Form 2 reads them. And sometimes I just read them at the end of morning time because they're so engaging and you can learn about a particular person or event without reading a really thick book. So absolutely, yes. As far as the history, so the history, the science, excuse me, the science is a separate subject, but it does go along with the time period that you're studying. So for instance, like we talked about my form two is studying about Edison and her science because we are learning about the time period that Edison lived in. Right. So it and, does go in form one, sorry, Shay, in form one, science is nature study only. Yes. She only had them studying nature studies. So the sciences, formal science didn't start to form two in her reasoning behind this, which is her reason for how she developed everything, geography, history, everything. You start with what the kid knows, what they can see, touch, feel, experience. So little kids, they want to be out in nature. They want to be feeling things and smelling things and doing things. And then the formal kind of abstract science, again, waiting until they're older. So everything she did was so just developmentally appropriate for children and not trying even though she had a very high view of children and very high expectations of what they were actually able to learn, the way that their brains develop and the way that we now understand that with neuroscience is exactly how Charlotte Mason put together her curriculum. So I'm glad you liked it, Jenica. That's great. Yeah, I teach at a co-op and the U.S. history teacher, 10th grade, um, she uses a lot of the picture books that I recommend to teach the history concepts in a fun way to high school kids. They're just so well written that it's like, these are super interesting. And it gets those concepts in a way that reading from a book wouldn't do sometimes for the older kids. There was another question. Oh, the pros and cons versus printed versus this, the digital PDF. It's just basically printing costs. <laughs> like printing costs have gone up so much in 2021. There was a, not 2021, gosh, what year is it? In 2022, there was a huge paper shortage. It's my printing costs. I really don't make much of a profit on that because printing costs are so expensive, especially the full color ones. So I guess it just depends on what kind of printer you have. If you want to print these off all yourself, that's the big difference. Jay, am I missing something? No, other than just remember that those are downloads. And if you purchase a download, you need to download it to your computer or to right. your iCloud or to your device so that when the link expires, you still have access to that thing. So that's really the only difference. Yeah. And a form one, like how many consumables, it just depends on the age, but like they're form one and they're able to do the language arts packet. The only consumable you would need is the language arts packet. So each 
I don't know how to explain it. So they would do cycle one, form one. That could be all like their first grade year. If, you were, if we're talking about public school grades, okay? Then the next year, they would still be in form one. They'd be in second grade, but they're doing cycle two. Then they're doing cycle three. They'll be in third grade, still following form one. So, but they're having all different books because they're completely different cycles. They're all completely different books. Then when they're in fourth grade, they move up to form two, they would be in cycle four. Then the next time when they go back to cycle one, they're in fifth grade. So they're in form two. You can follow those same plans again. They're just older. So they're doing a different form, completely different book. So that's how it compares to like a public school grade. And it's not that each grade, like in form one, it's not like, here's the first grade plans. Here's the second grade plans. Here's the third grade plans. It really is integrated. And there really is ways that you can adapt it based on your kids develop mental level within that form, but it makes it so much simpler than having 12 different grades. <laughs> so much simpler. Mm -hmm. Did you want to ask, uh, answer this last one, Shay, about um, this difference? Let's see. Okay, Simply Charlotte Mason and AGF. One of the differences is, and why I chose AGF over Simply Charlotte Mason, I will tell you back in the day, is because that is a six-year history cycle. Sure. That, it, that was very fresh. It's a very big difference. And if you have younger children, you may not be thinking that far ahead, but that means your child is only going to hit that history cycle twice in an entire school career. So one reason I feel like that my general piece is so much deeper is because we don't stretch out the ancients over such a long period of time, which was very frustrating to me. Another thing is we're hitting that time period. If I start in the first grade, then they're going to hit that three times by the time they graduate. They're going to hit every single time period three times because four times three is 12. So that's one of the biggest difference. Another difference is the way that AGF gives you the flexibility. And I'm not sure, I know your question was about maybe it's how you're presenting. I would say maybe go back and learn more about the philosophy and what the methods actually are. We have a lot of handholding, so much handholding in the parent packet. How do I do this? Really, you read and you narrate. You read and you narrate. You read and you narrate. And it sounds like so simple. Julie and I just did a podcast about discussing that. But the higher level thinking skills, I don't want to dive too deep into the philosophy, but the higher level thinking skills that are involved in that are just so valuable other than, okay, here's the story and here's the, the comprehension questions. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a full explanation. There's a lot of comparisons of both of those online, but um, in my personal experience of the deep dive I did finding AGF, I just felt like it was truly followed the philosophy without being overwhelming. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Shay. Lisa asked about the high school science plans so, versus the weekly plans. So the high school science plans are just the science on the weekly plans, the science, there's too much for high school. So it's, again, it's a spreadsheet. We give you um, two different kinds of options for biology, two different options for chemistry, two like you can pick based on your child and kind of go from there. But it's just, it's the same thing as that spreadsheet, but it's in more detail because the high school science, there wasn't enough room on the spreadsheet for how deep the high school sciences can go. Is there age of curriculum for form one students or is it suggested that to do your own version of nature walks? When should students start to have, oh, I think you mean, is there an AGF nature curriculum? Because the curriculum is for form one students for everything. In cycles one and two, it uses a book called Exploring Nature with Children. In forms three and four, we do have our own nature plans written by the amazing Shay. I've tried adding the printed morning time plans to my cart, but it keeps, okay. Yes, it is out of stock. So I believe it is, are you adding cycle four, Brittany? <laughs> cycle one, if it's not, yeah, they're coming. <laughs> we we able to bump them out of the cart. We've got yes. that cycle one. Way. Yes, yeah, cycle one and cycle four, I believe, are being restocked at the moment. Like I said, the paper shortage has been tricky for some things. So yeah, if it bumps out of your cart, it means it's out of stock. But we're trying to get it back in stock as soon as we possibly can. So Shay, if people have additional questions after this call and after they dig into things, how can they get a hold of us? You can email us if you have particular questions that you okay. yes that you want answered. The Facebook group after you purchase is a members only group that is extremely valuable for the kind of how has anybody used this with a grade five and a grade six? Does anybody have a neurodivergent child that deals with this? There's lots of great information there that goes much more in depth in the community group. And then what I love to do, my job is all the consultations for a gentle feast. And you can email me 
and uh, you can purchase on the website. It tells you my email. I absolutely love that. It's my favorite thing to do. I make lots of friends all over the country doing that. We also have on the website, we have a chat now button and all of those messages come to me. If you have, if you're trying to order and not really sure what to order or have a question about a particular thing. And I really try, it says 48 hours, but usually I'm back to you on that within 12 to 24 hours. Yeah. Lots of support. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us tonight. I hope that was helpful to see everything. I do have a more in-depth video, too. I'll put in the, the email here as well that can, I walk you through all the pieces in the video for you to see. But I, I think it's hard sometimes to wrap your brain around it, and it does help to see, okay, what does this actually look like? What am I actually getting? What do I actually open? Because it is a big investment, and I realize that that is a big investment for folks. And so you want to know, okay, is this actually going to be helpful for me. And that's why I was saying like, it isn't for everybody, but for people who really want some more tools, want to follow Charlotte made some philosophy. It's been a real big blessing for my family and just something that's really helped me through a lot of crazy life transitions in the past several years and working full time. And we get that question all the time too. And I'm like, I use it. I work full time. <laughs> and it's, it is very adaptable, which was my heart. So again, thank you everyone. And please reach out to us. If you have any more questions, we're more than happy to help you. So Thanks. Bye, everyone. Hey there, Julie Ross here. I just wanted to say thank you for listening to today's episode. If you like this show, it would mean the world to me if you would leave a positive review in iTunes. This really does help people learn about the podcast. And each month, I will pick a winner to receive a free gift. Don't forget to check out all the free resources we created for you at thefeastlife.me. Thank you.